So, how many of you in this room have thought to yourself, perhaps after a couple of drinks, you know what I really need in my life? Not money, not the latest gadget, no. What I really need, more than anything else, is a giant chocolate sculpture. Yes. Probably not. But if you had, then you'd have a problem, because large moulds are prohibitively expensive, difficult to use, and difficult to actually produce in the first place. This is where edible Lego steps in. Or more accurately, it should be probably be called chocolate Lego. The idea is that you upload a mesh, and then the back end generates a way to construct this out of standard sized blocks, i.e. Lego. So let's see how this works. So let's say a user wants to produce a sculpture of this teddy bear. They first upload it to our web-based front end and specify the standard block size. This is the dimensions of the unit cube that will be used to make up the majority of the final sculpture. So the tool will generate something like this. These are renders from the actual tool, by the way. Or if you specify a slightly smaller block size, you'll get something like this. Now, both of these have a big problem, and that is the sheer number of pieces that are required to make them, and therefore the length of time it would take to assemble them. So we need a way to be able to describe local details of the mesh without having to choose a ridiculously small block size. Solution, well, as you can see, those are the block size. Solution is custom parts. These are parts that have custom molds generated for them by our tool, which then the user can go and 3D print. The idea being that these can accurately describe the local features that are smaller than the standard block size would normally allow. Whilst we initially planned to have these exactly represent the piece of the mesh, the problem is this is an insolvable problem generating molds for them. Because if you think about how you generate the mold and how you have to cut it up in order to be able to actually remove the part, you can always contrive a more spiralling mesh or a more arbitrarily deformed mesh such that it's not actually possible to generate a mesh with that number of parts. So we decided to go with a different approach, which is you instead take the mesh and you project it onto a plane. And then based on that, you extrude it to generate a prism, which is your custom part. The advantage of this is that custom part will then be trivially castable using an open-topped mould. So let's see what Teddy looks like. It's not bad. You've successfully doubled the block size, and it still looks like a Teddy, basically. For comparison, this is what it looks like with the same block size, but no custom parts. <laughs> it's not really a Teddy bear anymore. So how does this all work? Well, unfortunately, as with most geometry-based algorithms, it's horrendously difficult to actually explain concisely, and will probably take over an hour to actually do properly. But I'll give you a brief overview of the steps involved. So first we take our teddy and we cut it up into pieces. Um, yeah, don't tell the RSPC. Um, this will preserve the triangle, so it relies on the assumption that if you cut up a triangle, it can be converted into multiple triangles that don't overlap any of the blocks. Then comes the most horrendous part of the algorithm, which essentially takes all of the blocks' meshes and makes them contiguous, so it adds in the sides that are missing. Um, if you're interested in how this works, I do have a handout that explains it, but see me afterwards if you want it. So now we can move on to custom block generation. So we will focus in on this particular foot of this teddy. So we project it onto a plane and end up with this horrendous mess of self-intersecting triangles, which you can't really do a great deal with. So then we remove all these triangles. In this case, it really yields a single polygon. In practice, the algorithm supports arbitrary hierarchies of holes and polygons, and the rest of their software will work correctly. Then based on this and the projections from the other two axes, we can generate three custom blocks of which the user can select one. By intruding these into a, into a cube, we can generate holes. Um, Molds, I mean, not holes. Similar thing. So I'd just like to give you a couple of examples that showcase this well. So the pumpkin, this is a pumpkin with 10,000 10, faces, and it's able to generate the result in under seven seconds. This is a teapot showing very few parts, but still accurately representing the shape in question. And this is a rabbit, which I think kind of looks nice. Thank you for listening.